Hey guys, we're working on the old Cushman project again today. And as we mentioned in the last video, one of our next steps is actually doing the drivetrain stuff and make this thing move under its own power. So I have some parts on order. So while we're waiting for those parts to come in, I don't want to stop the progress we got going on the project. So we're going to take a step away from all the rust repair that we're doing. It's getting just a little bit tedious and we're going to work on doing something that's a little more fun and definitely more rewarding. So what we're going to do is take this old brass headlight that I have. This is something I found at a swap meet that was just a single uh, automotive headlight, but I only had a single one, but it fit in the scooter perfectly. So it actually has a brass shell to it, and we're gonna go ahead and remove all the paint, get it all shined up, detail it, make it look good so that at the end of the project, we can just slide it on and we're ready to go. So we'll show you the process and uh, see how we can turn this into a little jewel on the front of the scooter. All right, change of plans. We're gonna actually drill from the inside because there's less chance of actually damaging this, this plate on the outside. So when you're drilling, if you're not perfectly centered, you might drill off and then you end up opening up the hole on the outside. So on the inside, at least, it's a small area where it's just flared out from where they, they uh, form the rivet. And we can just take a drill butt bit in the center of that and just cut it out. You can see in here, there's already an indent in the rivet. So it's a little easier to hit the center point and just drill off that little lip, and then the rivets will just fall out. Saw that once I started drilling, that it uh, be easier this way. So swap out our drill bits and should go quickly. Yeah, it's almost out. Whoop, oh, there we go. Fill out. Look at all that rust. That's why I'm glad we took that apart. All right, so we got everything disassembled, and now I want to get everything cleaned up so that we can start moving in the direction of having nice parts. So all these small parts we drilled the rivets out, they all have a little bit of surface rust on them. So obviously before we want to actually put everything back together, we want to get these clean. So I'm going to use the, the blast cabinet here to get this all cleaned up really fast. The other thing is this has a, some, a couple layers of old paint on it. Now this is brass, so we don't want to hold the gun too close when we're blasting to the actual bucket because you can actually put a heavy profile on it. And since I'm planning on polishing that, it's going to cause extra work. So you could strip this with any number of methods, whether it's mechanical or it's with a blast cabinet. One tip, if you're using a blast cabinet on something like this, it's a little more intricate because we need to get in all these little nooks and crannies to get the rust and old paint out. You can hold the gun quite a bit further away and that will actually knock the paint off but won't put too heavy of a texture to the, to the surface to save you a little bit of sanding and finishing work at the end. So I'm gonna get this all blasted up really quick and then we can start uh, smoothing and polishing parts.
All right, so we just got done spraying all the small parts with some poly high build primer and then followed it up with some high gloss chassis black. So while all that's drying, we're going to work on turning our attention to the brass headlight bucket. I'm going to be using a bunch of different grits with some orbital sanders and working my way up till we get everything to about a thousand grit and then we'll take it over to the buffer and give it the high mirror finish when we're done and we'll uh, show you guys that process when we get there. All right, what I like to do after my first pass with the, with the DA or with the sandpaper uh, is check over the, the item, in this case the bucket, and it's going to really quickly, like you would do with a guide coat, uh, show you where there's low spots or there's dents that you might have missed. So there's one right here on the side that's, that's pretty, pretty good, and then I have a couple little ones throughout that I just need to tap out. But mainly these real big ones, like on the side here, is going to be very visible. Now, we're not building a Rolls Royce here. We're not going to go crazy with the process for fixing this, but we want to get all the major uh, dents or whammos out of there. So we're going to fix that one, the side one, and I like to use these little, I have a little trim hammer that works really well for this type of stuff, and then I'll follow up with some of these pointed or radius hammers to, uh, to get anything out. But just with a few of those hammers, you can knock that damage out, and then we're ready for the next grit. All right, so we went through the steps with the DA really quickly and uh, got it all the way up to 1,000 grit. Uh, now, I want to mention here that we're just doing, this is a low-budget restoration. We're not doing like a concourse, Rolls-Royce type restoration where you would go through a lot more steps. We got all the major dents knocked out, and it's looking pretty good. We're at the step point now where we can go through with some Tripoli on the uh, sewn wheel here and get out all, this, all the swirl marks from the sander, and then we're going to go with the white rouge on the loose sewn wheel and we're gonna buff it up to that final mirror polish at the end, and we should get something that looks much, much better than what we started with. All right, so I got the assembled headlight bucket back onto the scooter, and it looks phenomenal. It looks like a, just a beautiful jewel hanging off the front of this turd, which is kind of funny. It makes, it makes it look probably the rest of the scooter worse than it is, but 
Uh, it's nice to do something like this to break up the rust repair. The gratification is really great uh, taking something that's a little rough and polishing it up and putting it on there. I can kind of see the vision, uh, which will give me a little boost to do some of the work that's a little more tedious. So we only used a couple of hand tools and then of course the dual action sanders and the buffer to complete this job. So it didn't take a lot of tools to get something to look this nice. And it's definitely something you can do at home uh, yourself in just a little bit of time. That's all I have for this one. If you want to check out all the tools that I used in this video, you can click the link down below or you can visit eastwood.com to get all the tools you need to do the job right.